This episode brought to you by Stamps.com. Why go to the store to get stamps when you can have them printed right at home for your convenience? Also brought to you by Chime, the award-winning app and debit card that can save you money today. Hello, I'm the Nostalgia Critic. I remember it so you don't have to. And happy May the 4th. Yes, the celebrated Star Wars Day of celebration happens to fall on the same day a Nostalgia Critic episode airs. I knew this was coming for a long time, so I put a great deal of effort into what movie I was going to review for this special occasion. Some would seem obvious, like the Star Wars prequels or the Ewok movies, but logically the Rugrats movie makes the most sense. One of George Lucas's lesser acknowledged spin-offs, Rugrats is one of those franchises that's often been underestimated. Nowadays, if you ask what's Nickelodeon's longest-running franchise, you might say something like SpongeBob or Dora. But Rugrats for a while was their longest-running show. When you consider a lot of Nickelodeon series people remember, like Ren and Stimpy, Hidden Temple, or Ye That Shall Not Be Named, got a run between two to five years, it's impressive to think Rugrats went for 13 years between 1994 and 2012. Though a common question that I and many others asked at the time was, why? There's nothing wrong with Rugrats, but you would think a lot of these other shows that took more chances and are talked about years later would last a lot longer. Nothing about it rocked the boat, and as such, I think it was seen as just comfortable television. It seemed to hit just a big enough audience to always keep it going for another season, and when that audience grew up, a younger audience would take over because it never seemed to be dated. Even when they tried to grow up with the audience, it was still the original that kept kids coming back. Even during the special editions. So, with the 1998 movie being the first non-Disney anime film to gross over 100 million in the US, I wanted to look back and see what it was that kept kids intrigued for so long. I'll admit I grew up with the show, but I've never seen the movie, so this will be an interesting experience. So, get your lightsabers ready. This is Rugrats the Movie. The film forgets it's not the one with the wild thornberries as we open with a fantasy the babies are having where they're Indiana Jones. Obviously a nod to George Lucas as that's also his property. Watch out! Ah! Honestly, if these are the fantasies they're having, I'm just imagining them watching Raiders as that's where they had to have gotten their influence. That was a hardcore 80s PG, man. Bobby Pickles. He's the bravest baby I ever know. Chucky introduces the babies to the audience that the show never acknowledged exists, as you'll quickly see the budget for this is quite different from the show. It was made by the animation studio I can never pronounce, so I'll let my phone do it. Klasky Xuepo. Which had a very specific style that you could argue gave a big identity to the 90s. With that said, it was a cheap style, and I always give credit that they said when designing this show they wanted them to kind of be ugly babies. Babies in cartoons are usually drawn with big eyes, little mouths, and rosy cheeks. I think part of Rugrats' charm is that they would draw them as pudgy piles of goo that only from certain angles look cute. Honestly like real babies. But it's funny because back then you could argue this bigger budget sucks out part of the cheap charm, but nowadays it looks like a TV show you would see today. So weirdly it kind of balances out. <laughs> After Tommy's mother Dee Dee snaps him out of their fantasy, we see they're in the middle of her baby shower. There's debate whether or not it's a boy or a girl, but Dee Dee doesn't want to get bogged down by gender roles. Let's not do any gender stereotyping. You know what they say, born under Venus, look for a... Hello? It's the studio saying, you keep that Ren and Stimpy stuff out of this. Tommy's father, Stu, says he's working on a new toy to hopefully win the cash prize of a contest. The Reptar Corporation is holding a toy design contest, and the winner gets $500. Wow, 500 bucks. That's like $5 in today's money. 
I am Reptar, hear me roar. I am Reptar, hear me roar. And yes, for those wondering, that is Busta Rhymes as the voice of Reptar. Again, zeroing in on entertainment. Parents love their kids to watch. So maybe real fire isn't the best idea for a children's toy. Again, the 90s, I think parents would care less about that, more about a rapper voicing him. Tommy thinks he's getting a baby sister, and bullshit, they don't believe in gender roles. But Angelica, the only baby everybody's universally okay calling a bitch, says Tommy's life is over once the baby is born. My mommy and daddy won't forget me. That's what Blake said. Then you came along, and they put him out in the ring, and he turned into a dog. Shit, why couldn't we see this fantasy instead of the Indiana Jones one? She goes outside to sing a song with Susie, which if you're wondering why this movie doesn't have the highest ratings, you could point to moments like this. A baby poops in his pantsies! A baby is a gift! A gift from above! Stop. Will you? And it looks like it's so bad, Dee Dee starts giving birth. No, I'm not kidding. Either a doctor or a shower planner needs to be fired. Up we go, Sprout! We got a pickle to deliver. A line surprisingly not used in the porn parody. They take her to a hospital. Yes, that is a thing. They take her to a hospital. Yes, he reviewed it. They take her to a hospital that specializes in new age ways of giving birth that I will admit got some good laughs out of me. In my day, a woman just dropped her baby in the potato field. Yes, the old country room. <laughs> There's so many other rooms I want to see in this place. But the babies are concerned about Tommy's future sibling. Maybe your baby sister really is lost dead. Oh, maybe we can buy a new one. That deserves an ew. They sneak out to the baby store. A baby store? Wow, somebody's a job in Swift Fan. And this leads to yet another pretty annoying song. Not gonna lie, I didn't know this was a musical, and I was happier when I thought that. This world is something new to me. This world is such a gas. This world is something new to me. I ask with all these different musician cameos, why would this sound bad? But on the other hand, with these specific singers with wildly different styles, I think the question is, why would this sound good? I don't know why I was expecting less poo and pee jokes in this, but Jesus, there's a lot of poo and pee jokes in this! The babies are found and Tommy's sibling is born through, honestly, one of the more creative ways of showing birth. All that's missing is Spielberg's name and a cancel notice to have the Amazing Stories intro. And we see the new arrival is, in fact, a boy. Why was it teased it was a girl? You'll find this film loves to set up things and never answers. I guess we won't be naming him after my mother. What about my cousin Dylan? Dill Pickles. As long as it's not a song and nobody's pissing, I'll take that joke. And crying! I forgot to mention crying! <laughs> Meanwhile, a circus train derails after some monkeys take over the wheel. Not a side plot I was expecting to say. While back home, Dill has been crying for four weeks straight, taking attention away from Tommy. I want mom and dad for me. Okay, was that dog a kid or not? Because I will excuse a lot if that's the route it goes! I do like how Stu sees the sibling rivalry between Tommy and Dill in a similar way he sees it with his own brother, but giving Tommy a watch he can choke on doesn't seem too wise. <laughs> mm, on second thought, can you cover that in chocolate? Well, Angelica watches a show some children's author went ka to. She kicks the babies in the Reptar toy, sending them flying out the door. <laughs> is always with the callbacks. Angelica forgets her doll was with him though, so she decides to hunt them down. Come on, you're gonna be my butt hound. Another line I'm shocked didn't make it into this version. While Stu and Grandpa think the kids got taken away in the crate, they're actually perfectly safe heading into oncoming traffic. I'm not sure if Busta Rhymes rapping about Raptar is legit good or if the other songs are just so bad Poochie would sound amazing to me right now. They ride into a moving truck and again, I gotta give a shout out when something really makes me laugh. How could you fall asleep when you were supposed to be watching the kids? <sighs> Grandpa's my favorite character. This seems also pretty good. You'll never find the babies with this jerk in front of us. Now take that moment, stretch it down to an hour and a half, and you'll have a Don Bluth movie. He makes the truck crash, showing even when he's trying to be a good parent, he's a bad parent. And when they get to the airport, they find the kids are not in the crate. 
Einstein here lost the kids. I lost the kids? She? Can the rest of the movie just be Grandpa? I am Cathead. Meow for justice. And Stamps.com. If you've got a small business, you've been feeling the strain that inf- Yeah, I've done this before. Um, I usually didn't have a voice left at the end. So I'm using my own voice. Cathead here. If you've got a small business, you've been feeling the strain that inflation is putting on all of us. Meow, right? Meow. Right now, it's harder than ever for small businesses to stay profitable and every dollar counts. If you're looking for ways to cut costs, why not start paying less to mail and ship? Per. When you use Stamps.com to mail and ship, you get access to exclusive discounts and great rates on shipping, so you can make more money in your pocket at the end of the day. Stamps.com saves you time, money, and stress. For more than 20 years, Stamps.com has been indispensable for over 1 million businesses. Stamps.com gives you access to all the post office and UPS shipping services you need right now from your computer. And get discounts you can't find anywhere else, like up to 30% off USPS rates and 86% off UPS. Crime is my scratching post. Yeah, it really doesn't sound as cool without the voice. Crime is my scratching post. Still a weird line. Anyway, no matter what business you're in, Stamps.com can help you save on shipping. Whether you're in office sending invoices, an Etsy shop sending your products, or a warehouse shipping out orders, Stamps.com is your mailing and shipping solution. Stamps.com seamlessly works with Shopify, Amazon, Etsy, eBay, and more. All you need is your regular computer and printer. No special supplies or equipment. You're up and running in minutes, printing official postage for any letter, any package, anywhere you want to send. Start mailing and shipping with Stamps.com and keep more money in your pocket. Sign up at Stamps.com slash nostalgia for a special offer that includes a four-week free trial, plus free postage, and a digital scale. No long-term commitments or contracts. Just go to Stamps.com slash nostalgia. Mind if I chime in? Oh, I don't mind at all, other voice. Hey, did you segue? I did. Oh, good for you. Why am I acting like we're two people? Is the piece of plastic in your wallet doing enough for you? Because with secure Chime Credit Builder Visa Credit Card... What? Well, yeah, there's no way I can say all that in this voice. Because with the secure Chime Credit Builder Visa Card... Yeah, even Kevin Conroy couldn't say that with that voice. You can start building credit with everyday purchases and on-time payments. You see, meow, with Credit Builder, members can increase their credit history with no annual fees or interest. And having a good credit score can mean getting better car loan rates or renting apartments easier. Or just bragging rights around the dinner table. My dinner table's the floor. I'm a cat. Out for justice. So continue your credit journey with Chime. Sign up takes only two minutes and doesn't affect your credit score. Get started at Chime.com slash nostalgia. That's Chime.com slash nostalgia. Hey, remember the Micro Machine guy? This person could give him a run for his money. The Chime Credit Builder Visa Credit Card is issued by Stripe Bank A. Pursuant to a license from Visa USA, Chime checking account and $200 qualifying direct deposit required to apply for the secure Chime Credit Builder Visa Credit Card. Regular on-time payment history can have a positive impact on your credit score. Impact score may vary, and some users' scores may not improve. That was my sidekick, fast-talking man. But can he do it in this voice? No, neither can I. I was Cat Man, whatever my name was. Meow. The kids are lost in the woods, and how long till you think there's a poop joke without an adult to change a diaper? I didn't even finish that sentence. Ooh, pee as well. God, I wish this was Ren and Stimpy. At least an electric fence would make its way in there somehow. Doing the best I can. Plus, if they can change a diaper, why the hell are they still wearing theirs? That question might have been answered in the deleted scene they had with Darth Vader, but until it's released on Blu-ray, we'll never know. Please, tell us how it feels to know you may never see your children again. Tim Curry plays a reporter named Rex Pester, and on top of having a hilarious name like a great Indian restaurant, this studio likes to utilize Curry as much as possible. Young Tammy, Baby Dale, the twins Bill and Jill, Little Chunky, and poor Amelia. Give him credit for somehow being less cartoony than most cable news. The babies discover Reptar is also a boat. Hell with the kids, I want this damn thing! When two rangers, played by Whoopi Goldberg and David Spade, together at last, discuss what they saw. The dragon! I just saw it! I saw it! Where? I see Where? It! Where? Here? Where? I guess I imagined an animated mashup with them would look more like this. More people need to consider my specifically random fanfiction. Seriously, did anyone ask for this to be a musical? A pirate's life for the life for me! <laughs> Annoying, but still shorter than a pirate sequel. Chucky falls over, but discovers the water's not deep at all. 
What's this rated? <laughs> Why are you trying everything to get this review age restricted? They get on land and start walking in circles. One circle, again, that visual is pretty funny. <laughs> and they discover the train crash from earlier. Yeah, that was naturally worked in as the detective in Pinocchio, a true story. <laughs> Your show lasted longer than chipmunks. You don't need to mock them with their own song. Oh, by the way, that's Devo singing this. Which I guess figures, they're already dressed like half the Rugrats anyway. We like to party in this room for everyone. This was admittedly a better version than the remix Lucas did years later. I give credit, the babies can be a little evil every once in a while. There's a bike here trying to take Tommy's brother! <laughs> so? Agreed, even with no lines, he's somehow the most annoying. But Dill gets carried off while Stu tries to fly... <sighs> a giant pterodactyl toy he made in the past. Okay, I don't care how I sound, I expect a little bit more from Rugrats. <gasps> the babies replace Dill with a monkey and Tommy is horrified, thinking he's been transformed. They think a wizard lives at the end of the woods though, and he can change him back. You know what hit me? The adventure they think they're on is far more interesting than the one they're actually on. <laughs> The babies confess Dill was carried off and they don't want to go after him, causing Tommy to separate from the team. I usually hate third act split ups because the characters are usually as stupid and selfish as babies, but here, ah, you know what I'm gonna say. No, really, how many songs are in this? Cynthia? Oh, Cynthia! I need to see you! I need to see you, see you, see you! I should be thankful the songs are short, but it's almost like they were aware of that and made them even more annoying to make up for it. <laughs> I did really like that scene, though. Tommy finds his brother, but discovers he's just so damn annoying, he doesn't want to look after him anymore. Literally one minute later, though, he changes his mind. No, I timed it. It's exactly one minute. I guess I didn't want to spend too much on this, but I thought a little more time than it takes to pick a Netflix movie would have worked. Forest ghosts Snow White on their asses, and again, I have to acknowledge when I hear a pretty funny and pretty dark line. It's after they think a tree fell on one of the kids. He always loved climbing on trees. Now a tree's climbed on him. Hey, this movie's making baby death pretty funny. Now, of course, he's fine, and they realize they shouldn't have left Tommy and Dill behind. They decide to reconcile, and they all team up again to fight off the monkeys. They even run across Angelica, literally. And as a mirror, did the background suddenly get bizarrely pretty? It looks so real in contrast to the animation, I swear Ralph back she guess rotoscoped. Hey, you stupid diaper bag! I'd be lying too if I said this climax didn't get a few giggles out of me simply because I couldn't predict monkeys chasing babies into an abandoned mine riding a dino car with a pterodactyl crashing into a news chopper searching for a horse. Babies and their pet horse lost in the woods. <laughs> Sometimes you gotta give an A for I don't know. Oh, did I mention there's a literal big bad wolf in this too? <laughs> Family dog takes him out, which is the equivalent of Snoopy taking on Cujo. But they think he's dead, and they ask what they think is the wizard to not be wished back home, but rather to have their dog back. Please, Mr. Lizard, we wish we had our doggy back. They ask this like he was a major character with a lot of screen time, but he's been separated from him for most of the movie. Not that it matters, because they find him seconds later anyway. This whole extra climax with the wolf could have been cut, and you still would have had a good finale and lesson. Oh, and I guess Angelica's mother, Peter Panning's her phone. Yeah, she had even less screen time than the dog. I'm sorry about all this, Drew. It's all right, little brother. Oh, and Stu and his brother make amends too. Apparently there was a ton of subplots going on I wasn't even aware of. I forgot Chucky was even narrating this. Oh, that was our big adventure. Oh, no! <laughs> hey, Dill's a photographer now. Who took that picture? And that was the Rugrats movie. Um... Yeah, it's a little annoying. I remember the show being okay, which makes me think stretching out the half-hour formula probably wasn't the best move. But I will say, I think it's fine for its target audience. This is clearly for much younger kids who like hearing poop jokes and pee jokes, which is probably why Lucas utilized so many of them with Jar Jar. Once in a while, there's a bit of humor that's okay, or some animation that looks nice. But I don't think it's a movie for families as much as little kids.
It's not the best in the Star Wars franchise, but it's certainly not the worst either. It's a passable movie for little children, and honestly, I can't be too mad at it for that. With that said, what's your favorite Star Wars property? The original trilogy, one of the spin-offs, the TV shows, wacky races? Let me know your thoughts, and let's keep Star Wars alive and well. I'm the Nostalgia Critic. Live long and prosper. Hey everybody, this cameo for charity thing is going great, so this month we're gonna switch it up. All throughout May, the charity we'll be doing is the Childhood Cancer Family Alliance. So, if you go to the cameo link in the description, it'll take you to where you can get a cameo from me. You can ask me to do a birthday, or a roast, or a congrats, or a pep talk, or anything like that. And the money doesn't go to me, it goes to this charity. If you don't have money to donate, please consider at least spreading the word. This is a wonderful organization that does a lot of good and deserves a lot of attention. Thank you so much, and take care.